So um, this is what we're going to do. I'm going to show you a picture on the computer screen and talk a little bit about the artist. And then we're going to create, uh, we're going to uh, draw something very similar, OK? So this artist, this is an African-American artist named Beauford Delaney. And he lived um, in the 40s, 50s, 60s, um, 1940s, 1950s. He um, was a painter in Harlem, New York, and he was part of the Harlem Renaissance during the Great Depression. And maybe some of you have had a little bit of history class, I'm not sure, but back in the 30s and 40s in the United States, there was a really difficult time where everybody was um, pretty much out of money and it's called the Great Depression. And so a lot of people were having a hard time making ends meet. And this artist, Beauford, really uh, was in the same boat, but he worked to create paintings, to, to give people joy and to help cheer people up and to bring people together because everyone was trying to come together to help each other um, during this difficult time in our country's history. So this painting, it's very colorful. It's also very abstract. But you can tell when you look at it what it is, right? Somebody tell me what this scene, what this is. What does it look like? A city? Yeah, it is. It's a city and it's it's a street. And um, if you can see my cursor uh, jiggle around on the computer, you can see these circles. These are lamp posts like street lights. And the blue up here is clouds. And there's a little person over here on the left and the black and white on the left is a building. And you can see this sidewalk and in the middle is the street. And then across the street is another sidewalk on the right with colorful red and green buildings. He even made one building look a little bit like a face. Do you see that in the center here? It looks like a green face with orange eyes. <laughs> and then there's buildings at the end of the street right in the middle. So this is sort of um, a fun way to think about uh, something called perspective. And that is when you're looking down the street, um, you see a little bit on your left and a little bit on your right. And you also see the end of the street in the very middle. And so how do you draw that? You can see these sidewalks look like they're at an angle, right? So we're going to draw, we're going to draw something like this and, and have fun coloring it in and letting it be crazy and cheerful and joyful. Any questions so far? No. Okay, so hopefully you, um, I don't know whether the school provided you with a copy, a printout of this painting on paper or whether you just have it in an email somewhere. Um, but if you have it handy, you might want to keep it next to you. But let's let's just make sure you have all your supplies ready. I'm gonna I'm gonna leave this on the screen for you for a little while um, before I go to my hands. So you should have a piece of uh, white paper. Um, any size is fine. Any kind of paper is fine. You should have a pencil uh, and an eraser. And I think it would also be helpful to have a ruler. But if you don't have a ruler handy, you can just use the edge of a book or um, you know, just something straight, a straight edge. And then you want some crayons or markers, whichever you like better. You could even have paint handy, but we're gonna work with a lot of different colors. So I thought it would be easier to use crayons or markers instead of paint, it gets a little messy. Okay, so I'm gonna give, give you a second to make sure you have all your supplies and I'm gonna take this off the screen so you can see what I'm doing. One second. You should, everybody should be able to see my workspace now. I've got this piece of paper, got my crayons, I've got my pencil, I've got my ruler. Now, um, I'm, my picture, I've got a picture of this in black and white um, just, for, just for drawing by. But what I want you to think about whenever you look at a photograph or a painting like this of a street, you're really looking at lines. So this is where the ruler is kind of helpful. And you look at the sidewalk on the right side and you see how it, there's a line that goes at a bit of an angle, right? And on the sidewalk on the left, there's another line 
that goes at an angle and it's almost like you're making a triangle okay and the buildings are a little bigger on the outside and they get a little smaller as you look down the street so it's it's about perspective you're looking the in the objects close to you are bigger and wider and as you look down the street it gets narrower and smaller and you think about that next time you're you're looking outside your window or looking down the street when you're at the grocery store or something so so let's try drawing that let's let's try starting on in the left corner of your paper and just you can use your ruler or you can draw a line without the ruler and just take your pencil and draw a line sort of at a diagonal and draw another line from the right corner and make yourself a tr sort of a triangle right at the bottom of your page, bottom half of your page. That, and that is going to form our sidewalks. And then what you wanna do, sidewalks have a, you know, sidewalks aren't just a skinny little line, right? Sidewalks have some width, right? For walking on. So you wanna make a second set of lines for the sidewalks. And you might even make them, I'll show you, you might even make them a little wider on the outside and a little skinnier when you get to the middle, like that little wider and just a little skinnier. So now you've got two sidewalks. Let me know if you have any questions or let me know if you need me to slow down. Once you have your sidewalks in place, now you can kind of visualize that this in the middle, this area is your street. You could even put some dashed lines like traffic lines in the middle of the street to sort of remind you that this is the street and these are your sidewalks. So now what we wanna do is add some buildings. We're gonna leave this center area blank for just a minute. That's the very end of the street. So now we wanna add some buildings on the sides where the sidewalks are. And you can make these any shape you want but start with the vertical lines, right? The up and down lines. So, so I would just start with like one long line on the right side. Now, and then, and then put a top on it. Now you can put, you can make it flat. You don't have to get too fancy with, with a, a, a three-sided building. Just, just make it flat, but just, just think about the buildings um, towards the edge of the paper are closer to you. So they're a little bigger and the buildings as you get closer to the middle are just a little bit smaller, right? And maybe, maybe instead of a skyscraper rectangle, maybe you want one of the buildings to look a little bit more like a house with a pointed roof, right? How does that look? And then over on the other side, maybe you want a building that looks, um, that has a, as a, as a different kind of top. Maybe it, maybe it has a, an arched top like this and it goes down. Maybe it has a round top on this building. And if any of you have ever been to San Francisco, you know there's a building called the Transamerica Pyramid in San Francisco. Maybe you've seen it. And it is actually a building that looks like a tall skinny triangle. Now, notice I made that triangle bigger and I think that's a mistake because why? The buildings are supposed to get smaller as you get closer to the center of the page. So I'm gonna use my eraser and change that. And this is why I like drawing in pencil first so I can change my mind before I start coloring. So you think about what buildings you like and, and you make whatever shape buildings you want. And it could be houses or skyscrapers or crazy, funny, round buildings, whatever you want. I'm gonna change that and make it, I'm gonna make a, a building that has like a top like that. And then I'm gonna make just an, a couple of skinny buildings a little smaller as I get down to the center. 
So once you have your main buildings on the left sidewalk and the right sidewalk, think about what you wanna put in the distance. And this is at the end of the street. Maybe you wanna put some trees, like there's a park at the end of the street. Or maybe you wanna put just another, uh, another cluster of buildings. I'm gonna put some trees. I'm gonna pretend like there's a park. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna just kind of make a crooked line because I know I'm gonna make some grassy kind of maybe at the, at the end of the street, maybe some green. And I'm gonna just loosely make a couple of tree squiggles, okay? Now that's kind of a big tree. Now look at that giant tree and it's supposed to be really far away and it's taller than all the buildings. So that's not right. I'm gonna erase that. I'm making these mistakes on purpose so that you can see what I mean about perspective. That means that the relationship between one building and the next building needs to make sense if you want it to look like a real picture. So I'm gonna make these trees, they're big trees, but I'm gonna make them a lot smaller at the end of the street. So that's just my little squiggles to remind me that I'll fill in with color. And then up here, I have the sky that I can do whatever I want with. Now you can decorate your buildings. Now you have a choice here. You can start creating doors and windows with your pencil, or you can move right into the color. Um, and I'm gonna start with my pencil, but I'm gonna do it very lightly. And so I'm gonna, I'm gonna make one easy way to do windows on a tall skyscraper is to do it like a grid. So I'm gonna make kind of a little rectangle inside this tall building on the, on the right. And I'm gonna make lines and I think I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm just gonna make lines going down and divide that into four skinny columns. See how I did that there? And actually I've got, yeah. And then I'll go and make my lines across. If you look at skyscrapers, sometimes um, they're all glass on the front and the windows are all glass, but you can see the different floors, right? So you can count how many, how many stories, how many floors do you want the elevator to go up in this building, right? So I'm just gonna do that. So I've got all these floors, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 stories. Ooh, some say that's sort of unlucky. So we're gonna say it's 14 stories because the ground floor is number one, right? So there's that. And then this one, I think, this one I think I might make my windows a little smaller, right? Because this building's supposed to be a little further away, but I think I'll do just more traditional kinds of windows with little squares. And then I think I'll make, maybe this building has a garage at the bottom of it, right? So I'll make a big door at the bottom, like it's a garage door for the cars to go inside. Any questions? And then this one is sort of like a house so I might do something cute um, on the roof. I might, you know, I might, I might like to make some like a little gingerbread kind of cottage. And really what you're doing is each of these buildings can have its own personality, right? You don't have to make it all look the same. Like sometimes when you look down a street in a city, everything looks the same. But I want your city to be super colorful and super unique, just like Beaufort's uh, painting was. So remember now, this, this little cottage is further away, so the front door is gonna be small compared to now this one. I didn't really make a door on my skyscraper, so I'm gonna pretend like there's an entrance on the where you can't see it, and this is just all windows on this side. Garage here, a little door, and I'm gonna make some cute little 
mm -hmm. windows awesome. like that. Did you have a question? So just keep decorating your buildings with your pencil and then we'll start coloring. In my round one, my building with the arch on top, I'm gonna make almost like a sunshine mm -hmm. shape at the top, almost like I'm gonna pretend like it's stained glass. And maybe on this one, the windows are circles. You don't see that very often, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it because I can, because you're an artist and you can do what you want and make it express what you want to express. And I'm gonna give this building some round doorways too. Remember that, remember um, Beaufort made one of his buildings almost look like a face. I might do that over here. I might put two windows like eyes with blinds like your eyelids. And maybe there's a long skinny window for a nose. <laughs> and maybe it has little window panes like nostrils. And I don't know what I would do for a mouth. Hmm. I guess I'll just make another garage, like a, like a big open mouth. I might even put a funny little tongue coming out of his mouth. Why not? All right. And then I'm just going to do, I'm not going to do anything fancy with these little buildings in the back. And I'm, I know I'm going to put some trees back here and I'm probably going to do some clouds. And then there's the street lights. And, I, and that's a, a lesson in something in the background and something in the foreground. So you've got buildings in the background and the street lights are in front of the buildings. So on the, you put your buildings on the back line of your sidewalk, but put your street lights on the front line. So it's like they're, it's almost like they're in the gutter. And so you could do We'll make a we'll make a line and just remember where that street light is. And what you want to think about is we'll color the street lights in first and then the buildings behind them so that you can have a darker color for the street lights in front and a lighter color for the building behind. But remember your street lights are taller in on the outside and they get a little smaller as you get towards the center. So I'm going to make I'm just, they're, they're kind of like tall, skinny mushrooms. That's all I'm doing for streetlights. I'm not going to get too fancy with them. I'm going to put two on this side and I'm going to put one on this side. And another one here. I guess I'll put two on each side. That's good. I might put another, I might put another really small one at the very end of the street, right? In front of the park. All right, so I feel like my sketch is pretty done and I'm ready to move on to color. Would you guys like a little more time before you go to color? You have any questions? Yeah, can we have a little bit more time? Yeah, absolutely. I'll leave this right here so you can see it. Do you want to, and let me know if you want to see the original painting on the screen again, I can switch it. Are you going to add like any clouds like that, like he did? Yeah, I'm going to add clouds, but I'm not going to draw those because I want them to be really white. Got so I'll, I'll use the crayon with the clouds. And how, I'll show you can that you tell me, in a minute. Can you show me again how you finished like the trees at the end of the street? At the end of the street, I just made a couple round squiggles just to, to help me remember what I want to color in. Um, so I just made a couple of squiggly circles and a, just a couple of straight lines underneath them just to give the impression of a tree. 
Okay. I erased the big one because that was way too big and the perspective was wrong. And then I'll, I'll use my color, my green crayons and maybe my yellow crayons to, to, you know, fill in the trees. So and this and yeah. never and and those two original um, lines that we drew with our rulers they do not connect. Um, I don't think they should because they end right. at the park and the park has a little bit in front of it. But it, so you don't, you're if they were to connect, you would be almost looking out at infinity. <laughs> but we want to be looking not that far away. Mm -hmm. There's a park right at the end of the street, and we're not that far away. So having a little straight straight lines where the, the triangle doesn't quite meet makes sense. Got it, thank you. Yeah, the original art is really um, like goofy. Like I love it because it's so, you know, just it's very random. Like it doesn't even look nearly as organized as, as I was just doing when I was drawing these buildings. But um, that's what I like about it. If you really look at it, it kind of looks like there's a, a bend in the street. It looks like there's a curve in the street and that's that's not easy to achieve. Uh, so that's why we I went with a straight street. <laughs> what I like about his painting is that he adds a lot of texture and scratchy color in the sidewalks. And there's also something very symbolic in his painting in that it's there's no color on the left. It's mostly black and white on the left and colorful on the right. So it kind of makes you wonder what what does that mean if a city one side of the street is kind of kind of blah, it's not very colorful, it's just black and white, it's it's not very joyful, right? It seems maybe a little sadder on that side of the street. Or maybe it's a little more modern and, and more like steel and, and, you know, on that side of the street. But I really like the right side of the street because it's very colorful and very happy in, to me. But everybody might look, see it differently. So it's, it's, not, it's fun to, you know, to think about what you see in this picture and what kinds of emotions or what kinds of feelings you might um, think about when you look at this picture. I am going to, I think I'm going to do a combination of markers and crayons because I want those street lights to be really dark and bold in front. So I think I'll use markers for that. And then I might use crayons for the buildings in the background, but you can do it whichever way you want. I have a question. Yes. Um, are we allowed to use colored pencils too? Absolutely. There are no rules. Um, the one thing about colored pencils is that it's kind of hard to get really bright colors. Uh, it just depends on the brand of pencil that you have and the type of paper you're using. Crayons and markers, you tend to get brighter, bolder colors, which is a little bit more like the, the painting that we're working from, but, but, it, but lighter colors are totally fine too. And colored pencils give you a lot of control. Um, you can really, um, get details nicely drawn with colored pencils. Thank you. I have a yeah. follow up. I have a follow up question. Yeah. Can we use a mixture of crayons, colored pencils, and markers all in one drawing? The answer is always yes. <laughs> <laughs> the answer is always yes. There are there are very there are only a few times when uh, mixing different materials, different paints or what we call mediums, you might get an accident. Like it, they might not blend together well, but when, but so there are sometimes you want to go in a certain order. For example, when you have waxy crayons combined with a Sharpie or a permanent marker, you want to put the marker down first and the crayons down second because the marker won't work on top of the waxy crayon color very well. The marker works better on this plain paper. It doesn't mean you can't enjoy putting them together in one painting, but sometimes you have to do it in a certain order so that um, they don't get messed up. So that, that would be my recommendation. And then the same thing with colored pencils. 
you, you would, would not want to try to put colored pencils on top of waxy crayons, um, but you could go the other way around. You could put down colored pencil and then add crayon color in between uh, or on top. So what are we using the black permanent marker for? Well, I'm going to, now you can choose whatever you want, but my first thought when I put the, that on the supply list was I wanted to use it to outline my sidewalks and to outline my street lamps so that they were very bold and very clearly in front of the buildings. So I'm gonna start doing that right now. I am going and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my root. No, I'm not gonna use my ruler because I've already drawn it out pretty straight, but you can use your ruler if you want to. So I've got a, I've got a marker. There's like a, a thick tip and a, and a skinny tip. I'm gonna use, the thicker tip, but whatever markers you have uh, are fine. Doesn't matter if they're thin or thick. But I'm gonna I'm gonna draw my line for the sidewalk in a very. That's the first thing I'm gonna do. Very bold. Very bold. And I know I've just crossed over my vertical lines for the lamp post, but it's okay because I'm doing those in black also. And so I'm gonna do my bold marker on the sidewalk, just the outline of my sidewalk. And now I'm gonna do my lamp post. So I'm gonna do my thick lines for the actual post. So it almost looks like a fence right now, huh? And that's sort of the interesting thing about perspective is when you look at it flat, it looks like one thing, but when you think about it as being a view that is more in your eyesight and not flat on the table, but it's a view that you're looking at this way, it changes. I have a question. Yeah. Could you do a different kind of street light? Absolutely. You can make whatever kind of street light you want. I just went with simple, simple uh, straight ones, but for example, you could get fancy with your street light and and give it like um, here. Let me. I mean, you could make it like a, a hooked street light like this, with a with a little lamp at at the end and a oh, little nice. and a little base, right? Yeah. Um, you could even, or you could do a street light that is um, sort of. Uh, like has a shape to it, almost like the Eiffel Tower. Maybe there's a, like a little bubble in the middle and maybe it goes up like that and then it points at the top, right? It kind of looks like that and you've got your little light in the middle. And awesome. so maybe, it, maybe your street light looks more like a statue. Thank you. I just wanted to see a couple variations. Yeah, I, I went for this super easy, you know, torch. <laughs> Well, but, um, usually I do that also, which most yeah. of my students that are here could tell you. <laughs> yeah, well, and it is a little bit right. more. Well, and, and, and I went the uh, I went the even super easier way and did this just the circle like the artist. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly, like a big bulb. Mm -hmm. And if you think about downtown Concord, like sometimes in in certain parts of town, they might have fancier street lights mm -hmm. than they have. You know, and if you think about what a street light on a like on a freeway looks like, you know, it, it goes straight up and then it goes way out, right? Mm -hmm. and, right. Then it, and then it has the light, you know, it might be a square light at the very end, but um, that was, we're not really, we're doing more of a cute little downtown scene. So one of these kind of street lights would probably be more fun. Thank you. Um, so I've done my, so I've done my, my sidewalks and it's funny now you look at this, is it flat like a sidewalk or is it vertical like a fence? Yeah, at first, it's kind of hard to tell. They look the same. But as you start adding your details, then the vertical feeling of this street scene will start to become more obvious. So I'm just going to, um, I'm going to use an orange marker to outline my lamps. And then I'm going to fill them in with yellow. Now, here's another piece of advice if your pencil lines feel like they're too dark but you know what the shape is you could lighten them with an eraser first and then go over them with your marker it's up to you 
And then I have, um, I have a yellow. So first, because yellow, I don't want the pencil lines to show through the yellow. So I'm gonna erase inside my orange bulb. My eraser isn't very clean. I gotta clean that. So now I've got just more white inside my bulbs. And then I'm gonna, in the middle, when you think about a, a lamp or a street light, it's brighter in the middle and it's kind of like a flame. It's really bright in the middle and a little different on the edges. So I'm gonna kind of make a, a yellow circle in the middle of each of my street lamps. And I really like this. I've got an orange, but you can use your crayons at this point. The black marker really is what sets this part in front. So you can you can switch to cr crayons or whatever you want. But I'm gonna um, add like a little orange inside. And then I'm gonna um, just take my yellow and blend that a little bit. Now, once you have these, if your street lights are kind of plain, you could still take the marker and make them a little fancier. You know, some street lights also have street signs attached. Um, so like you could, add a little curly cue at the bottom here uh, if you wanted to and make it a little fancy or you could even add Ooh. a little street sign. I'm going to make little curly cues at the top like that. And remember, you got to make them smaller as you go back. So imagine this might be a little iron. Hey, hey Lonnie, do you have a question? Yeah. Um, can we do like a cloud and the sun? Sure, absolutely. The answer is always yes. Of course. Huh? When, when it comes to making your art, I want you to, you can do exactly as I do if, if, if you're more comfortable with that, or you can go out and express yourself completely on your own. I think, I think a clouds and a sun are a great idea. Um, so I'm going to, work on my sidewalks next. And this is where I'm gonna take crayons and I'm gonna make some crazy colors. I think I want my sidewalks to be purple. So I've got a purple crayon and I'm just gonna kind of scratch some color. And I'm gonna be careful not to go on top of my street lamps because technically my street lamps are in front, right? So I'm just gonna scratch some purple in here And we're not going for perfect, we're going for, for feeling, for color. I have another shade of purple. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna scratch. Now look at how, think about your sidewalk and think about the direction of your scratches. If I was going in a circle or this way, it wouldn't really feel like a sidewalk. A sidewalk kind of has lines in it, right, going across. So I'm going to make my my color lines kind of go across that way too, because then it then you start to feel the dimension. I didn't do that over here. You see how I made my lines kind of up and down and they, they don't, it looks more like a fence. So look at the difference of these two. On the left, my color is going like this up and down. And so it makes that whole, this whole image look more like it's a fence. But th these lines, I made them go in side, right to going more this way horizontally and it looks more flat like a sidewalk. So you can really make a difference in, in the lines and the direction of your lines. So I'm gonna try and fix that. 
Now, sometimes with crayons, depending on how soft they are, how waxy they are, you can take um, like a little popsicle stick or a toothpick and, and make marks in, in the crayon and get more texture that way. And just like that, yeah. you, you see, you see the, see the marks I just made in my crayon? A little, they look like kind of white marks and it kind of looks scuffed up and sidewalks are like that, right? Sidewalks are kind of scuffed up. Boy, I really did not achieve. It's so funny how different my right looks from my left. I really kind of, kind of need, I kind of want to fix that, but it might be too late. I might have to um, might have to come back with a darker color to fix that, but I'm gonna leave it. I'm not too worried about it right now. Let's see, I do have a darker purple. Excuse me, Miss Lisa. Yes, what's up? Um, look at my drawing. Oh, are you holding it up? Hold on, I gotta change oh, my view. Luke. It's it's Luke. Oh, good job, good job. <laughs> now we need now we, yeah, your drawing is great. Now you just need lots of color. Right? Um, fill that up, fill that city up with color. Good job. Okay, so I think I like my sidewalks. I got kind of a mishmash of purples and pinks in there. I like it. So I, I kind of, you have a choice. You can start with your buildings or you can start with your trees or you can start with your sky. I kind of want to start with my trees. I'm kind of feeling like a tree right now. So I've got a green crayon and I'm going to kind of make outline my squiggles for the edges of my trees. like that. And it, it, depending on your crayon colors, may hopefully you have a, a dark green and a light green. And sometimes that's a fun way to do trees with two different greens. So now I'm filling in these trees with a lighter green, but the darker green helps me see that I have three different trees. Now I'm purposely leaving some white space Right, I'm not coloring in the lines completely. I kind of like the little bit of the white paper showing through because that looks like natural sunlight hitting the leaves. So there's lots of tricks to make things look a little bit more like a picture, but still make it also really fun. So now I've got some brown and I'm just gonna um, make my my little straight lines for the trunks of these trees. And then I think I'm gonna use, I think I wanna fill in, I don't know what, I guess I should fill in with a grass color, huh? Because that's what the park is, the park is grass. So I'm gonna just right in this space where the, your sidewalks don't meet, I'm ending with grass. Okay, and it's really loose. Loose is what makes art really fun. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm gonna choose some different colors for my building so it's really, really colorful. I think the buildings closest to the trees, I wanna make sure it's a really different color that, so that you can see it against the green. So I'm going to, I'm going to try this. I've got kind of a red color here for this roof line and the windows and the doors. And then I can decide maybe I'll make it pink the building. Who doesn't love a pink house, right? Now, if you um, 
kind of cover over a little bit of your dark marker. This remember how I said markers on top of crayon are a little, a little can be a little dicey, but I this marker is pretty good. I was able to still kind of go back over my curly cue and cover the crayon. Um, I was going to ask, can we use Sharpie to outline the buildings? Yeah, I think that's a great idea. Just be careful. It, um, uh, again, depending on, sometimes Sharpie uh, might skip on top of crayon. So, you know, you know, just make sure you're on the outside. But yeah, just like this. That's a great idea. That one, this Sharpie is really thin, but see, it doesn't. It doesn't work on top of the crayon, so I have to kind of make my line, my outline, just on the edge of the crayon. If you were, if you remember this building, I was, um, I decided I wanted to make it have a garage at the bottom, so maybe I'll draw a little car inside there, yeah. or maybe not. I'm not very good at drawing cars. <laughs> However, now here's another idea: is that if you don't want to color the buildings with your crayons you could add a little collage so like you could cut some colored paper into the shape of the building and glue it in there so there's you could you could go this is truly mixed media that means many different kinds of media so see i could i could do that and just have to cut the the shape of the sidewalk cut it i'm going to cut it at an angle there look at that i can add blue paper in there oh i like that and then maybe make a green roof oh that's fun so you can you can mix it up and just get a little glue i know i didn't put this on your supply list but but just this is also a great way collage is a wonderful way to cover your boo-boos so if you made a little mistake, never fear. You just you can draw it again on another piece of paper and glue it right on top and and add some more paper and make it a combination of collage and painting. We all make them, don't worry. I am so <laughs> loving this collage on top idea. Right. And then you could take your marker and draw on it if you wanted to. And it gives it a whole different texture. That building looks completely yeah. different. Um, but I really like the crayon, scratchy crayon texture because again, buildings can get scratchy sometimes. And it also looks like light. I always like having a variety of mediums. Yeah, for sure. That, I that I mean, that's what I do. I mean, I, I am a mixed media artist. Uh, I. I, I sometimes will paint with just, you know, one thing, just acrylic, but usually, usually I prefer to mix it up. And just so you know, so sometimes people can't attend in person, um, but I and a, a few other teachers I know will sometimes use your video or just what we've learned here to teach our lessons during the same lesson during school time. Oh, cool. So um, I feel like you're, whether you know it or not, you're reaching more students than are here at this moment. Oh, that's sweet. Thank you for telling me. I, we really appreciate it. The Art Association really enjoys being part of this. Mm -hmm. We also are doing some cla family classes with the Monument Crisis Center. Mm -hmm. And um, that's been kind of fun yeah. too. Uh -huh. Uh, but yeah, we love to um, just, you know, share creativity any which way we can. Well, and you guys were one of the first organizations to support our effort. <laughs> now look what I'm doing here. I'm taking my ruler and my craft stick and I'm scratching into my crayon color. I just 
and I'm just making some white lines by scratching into my crayon. Uh, uh, let me take the ruler off and I'll show you. Sometimes taking away color is just as cool as adding color. So see how I just colored all of my windows on this skyscraper solid gray. And then I, I could still see my pencil lines underneath and I scratched them and I made a more of a white line in the crayon. And I'm gonna do that going across ways now too. So that's, that's called mark making in the artist's world and using tools like sticks or the edge of a credit card. Ask your parents permission first, please. <laughs> Good idea. Uh, <laughs> but I, or maybe your Starbucks card um, is a great tool for scratching into paint or scratching into crayon and making marks. And it adds a lot of texture and it just, it looks really cool. So this, this making these marks like that to me, doesn't it make it look more like windows? Because it looks a little bit more oh, yeah. trans transparent Absolutely. like windows. That looks so cool. So by removing a little bit of color and using your ruler to make your straight lines, you can get a whole different effect than if you just drew them with a marker. All right. Lisa, so, Lisa, did you do the line down the center in in marker? Uh, I so far it's still in pencil, just to remind me that it was a street. And I think what I'll probably do, I'll probably just do it all in crayon. So like I'll I'll actually I think what I'll do is I'll do the lines in a in bright yellow, just like a street, right? Uh huh. Um, and then I'll probably color. That's actually this is more of an orange. And then I'll probably color around it uh, roughly with with a brown or a gray, kind of like this color in these in my skyscraper. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. And what um, were you gonna do with your sky, Lisa? Oh, I, I was gonna, gonna take. A, yeah, I was gonna be kind of traditional about it. I was gonna take a blue. I don't really have a light blue, but I was gonna take a blue crayon, and I was gonna make a couple of loose fluffy clouds with the blue crayon so that they're white inside and then I'll color it blue around the edges of the clouds. But I'll probably do is I'll probably scratch in a little blue like that and then I'll take my white crayon and add white on top of it to make it a little bit lighter and get right up around the edge of my clouds so that my sky looks a little kind of rough. Oh, that looks tumble. really cool. Yeah. So the cloud you draw with the blue because then you're going to meet meet the edges of the cloud with your with your sky. I'm going to leave a little bit of space around my trees and buildings. I'm not going to go right to the edge. And I like using kind of a circular motion in the sky so it feels a little swirly like wind. Right, so I'm just mm -hmm. making a little circular motion and coloring that in. And then I'll come, so it almost looks kind of like Picasso. What is that Picasso? Is it Picasso or Van Gogh? Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Van Gogh. Nice, yeah. Oh, so yeah. then I take that. Yeah, so then <laughs> I take job, my white. Alan. <laughs> <laughs> There's hope for I, me. <laughs> so take the white crayon and blend that it in. Beautiful. Oh, that's really pretty. So there's the, the, you know, most of my sky is in. That and I'm just going to leave my cloud. You know, I could put a little texture in the cloud if I want to. I could put a little glitter and glue in my clouds. I think that would be really cool. Any Thank last you questions? No, that was, that was wonderful. Thank you. Thanks Thank for you joining. Very much. My pleasure. Thanks for joining. We'll see you. Um, I actually, we've got a different teacher next month for our class. The next three months you have different teachers. So this will be my last time to see you this year. So oh. maybe I'll see you again in the summer. <laughs>